against the enemy. Uh, we are with the being Good evening, good evening, good evening. As you log in, drop it in the chat. Let me know where you're calling in from, along with those affirmations. Good evening, good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is Tasha M. Dyer, the trade whisperer. So ladies and gentlemen, let me officially welcome you all to the call this evening. And what this call is designed to do is this is a basics call. This is a getting started call. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to attempt to, We what we want to do is slow it down just a little bit. Kind of help you familiarize yourself with the skill set, the knowledge, the understanding, so you can really kind of integrate into our next level of trading and our next level of calls. And that's really what this is all about and what we're all about this evening. So as you're logging on this evening, I definitely want you all to drop it in the chat. Let me know where you're calling in from. Along with those affirmations, drop it in the chat. Now, your mindset, and that's where we'll start this evening. Now, you notice that. When we begin our calls, when we begin our platform, the biggest thing that you have to overcome is your mental. And so when we talk about basics, we talk about getting started, we talk about learning a skill set. I want to follow you all no matter where you're calling in from. You know, I see quite a few of you guys on the line this evening. And with that being said, I see a lot of you all, you know, it's I'm a BYOB master trader. I am the signal, all my trades in and profit. I am anointed for wealth, right? I am a billionaire. So all of these affirmations and all of the things that you're speaking, what I want you to know as we begin this evening is do you believe that you are destined for wealth? Do you honestly believe that what you are dedicated, you are destined, that success is yours? See, the reality is, is I don't know what success looks like for you. Each one of us have a different path. We have a different journey. And don't be shame. Drop it in the chat. Don't be shy, shame. Don't be bashful. Don't be any of that. Drop it in the chat because I want to know where you are mentally. I want to know where you are because you are embarking upon a journey that is going to create a shift in your life. And you see, you have to know, are you destined for wealth? Are, is success yours? So yes, 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 yes. Is it yours? Is success yours? Do you deserve success? Do you believe that you are worthy of success? That's where we have to begin this evening. You don't get out of life what you want. You get out of life who you are. And the things you accomplish in life will never outgrow you as an individual. So you have to be willing to grow. You have to be willing to put that foot forward. You have to be willing to understand that you are the greatest. You are the one 
that is is going to make it happen and you have to take that responsibility for yourself this evening and i'm gonna i haven't seen one person out of all the people on the in the, on the call i'm looking at the chat right now so are you destined there we go there we go are you destined for wealth or do you deserve the success do you honestly believe that you deserve it that's where we have to start So before we ever touch a chart, a chart, before we ever touch a, anything, we have to know that we deserve it. And then the reality is, is that this is a platform. This is a vehicle that will allow you to get there. Like this is a vehicle that is going to allow you to facilitate your success. So I know for a fact when I was younger, nobody ever said, oh, I want to be a trader. It's because it wasn't around. It was not around. Our children will say, I want to trade. Our children will say, oh, I want to do this. Our children will do that, but we won't. So this is a conscious decision that you're making. And you have to understand that it's not difficult, but it is different. It is different than what we've been taught. It is different than what we've ever experienced before. It is different. It's not difficult. It's just different. And as we go through anything this evening, that's where I need you at mentally, okay? That's where I need you mentally is to understand that this is different, but I got this. I got it. And I need you to say to yourself, I got this. I can do this. I am successful. That's what I need you all to say right now to yourself is that you are the ones that you can master this. You determine the outcome. Nobody can stop you. You are your success factor and you are your failure factor. I know we don't like to talk about when we don't succeed. I know we don't like to talk about those things, but you are that common denominator. And right now in this moment, you have to own your success. So are you with me as we progress forward? Are you with me as we take this to the next step? I am anointed for wealth. Do you believe that? And that's where you have to be as we get started here this evening, all right? So when you begin, as you notice that I have my website up, I see some yes, yes, yes. So I see you have our, we have our website up, BYOB Movement Worldwide. And there is plenty of information on this website for you to get started with your success. Now, where I wanna familiarize you with is two of our pages, okay? And then of course, we'll kind of come back. But you have our getting started in our affiliate. I want to familiarize you with this because first I'm talking about your mindset. Well, your success begins with your mental. And what you see is success steps to help you shift yourself mentally. These are books. These are foundational books. And these are those things that are going to allow you to shift mentally. And of course we have other documents and other things that are gonna help you, but I wanna kinda stay focused right here because this is the mental space. Anytime you feel yourself drifting, you feel yourself telling yourself, hey, I can't do something. Hey, this isn't anything like that. You want to redirect yourself and you wanna shift your subconscious mindset. That's what reading does. That's what, you know, that's what those affirmations are all about. That's why we start our calls that way. That's what this is all about because mentally you have to understand the essence of who you are. And sometimes we have to reprogram that subconscious mindset because when we get stressed or pressed, we default to our original. And if we have not reprogrammed, our original is lack and less than or the traditional, our comfort zone, the traditional nine to five, right? And we want to make sure we shift that. Now, as a beginner, and guys, if you have questions as we navigate through this, please drop it in the chat. You know, this call is designed to uh, for us to facilitate that, right? This call is designed for us to facilitate and to assist you with success. So where do you get started? Well, it's always, always going to begin. I'm going to flip on you. It's always going to begin here in the academy. You have to create that foundation. You have to begin going through those courses. And what happens in the academy is I'm going to shift over to our professional package. All right. Just kind of what well, that's um, 
some of those um those background things but i'm gonna look at the professional package because it encompasses everything but i want you to really kind of take a look at some of the courses and what i like about this and this was very intentional is you actually get to see what we offer you actually get to see you know what was there right you you actually get to see what you're going to have access to and you notice that it begins with that basic education that basic forex education you know it's got different topics now of course that's in your basic but once again candlesticks we talk about that on our calls our chart formations timing and form you know all of the things that we need crypto stock market all of the things that we need in order to begin that foundation and solidify that success is right here so all of these things are actually here for you and then i do want you guys to understand that we're not going to be on zoom if you notice we're not live streaming right now we are going to be inside of our academy and so all of your courses will be here at byob live now i am not logged in and as you can see if you're not logged in you don't have access but every course that you have access to based on your enrollment, this is where it begins. So you are going to, as you get enrolled, you begin here. You begin with your courses. We have tools. What are some of the tools that we talk about? We talk about checking your daily news. So as you begin, and I'm starting here very intentionally, as you begin your day, as you begin your trading journey, you want to always, always, always go through what's important. So when you look at where we have it, you know, our, our news that we have daily that comes out. So this isn't Bloomberg, it's BYOB Berg, right? So haha. -ha. But this is BYOB um financial news. It's the daily financial news that comes out. Now we don't listen to CNN and Bloom um CNN and MSNBC and all of those things. What we listen to and what we feed ourselves are how does this impact us financially? So we don't need anybody giving us an opinion because that's the only thing that happens when you listen to those sort of news sources is they no longer report news. What they do is they tell you how you're supposed to feel. So we do not listen to that because we have to be non-emotional traders. And if you stay listening to that, you're listening to that all day, what tends to happen is you're now an emotional person and that is going to impact you when you sit down in front of the markets. So what we do is we pay attention to financial news. How does this impact the dollar? How does this impact the strength? You know, I got a text right before this call about the Fed now, things that we talk about, things that is out there, things that we need to understand, you know, like um, the, the, the cash out, something we use consistently. He was murdered. You know, all of these things are going to impact. All of these things are going to impact you know, the strength and the weakness of the currency. And that's ultimately what we're here for. And what we want to understand is what impacts economically, how to, is it strong, is it weak? And that's how we take trades. So we also have our daily signals. So, you know, when we come through here, we typically analyze, we go through, this will be on our advanced training, you know, our weekly setups that we go over these, we discuss these, understand how this impacts the markets. That's our Monday and Tuesday calls where you see those. And that's really where you're going to find this information. And then, of course, there are other tools and resources, your Forex heat map that's here. These are things we'll get into, things you don't necessarily need as we're getting started today right now. But these are things you need to begin to familiarize yourself with. That's why I'm showing you these things. As you take trades, you know, your pivot points, your currency converter, your fibs. We talk about fibs all the time. So PIP value, margin. The I'm not doing that tonight, but I want you to familiarize yourself with those things, okay? Now, I'm going to switch back over to our website, and I'm going to go to our trading tools. Why is this important? Well, once again, my name is Tasha M. Dyer. I'm the creator of the BYOB Cash Out Strategy. Now, I will tell you this cop this strategy was back tested. It has a 92% accuracy rate. And then, ladies and gentlemen, also understand that it is copywritten. And so I'm saying all that to say that yes, what we do is we teach you market structure. We teach you market structure. We want you to see the market, but also understand that what the BYOB cash out strategy is, it's a strategy that is market structure with a twist. 
So it does not deviate. It does not take away from market structure. What it does is it really allows you to see the market with a little bit more clarity. So in a sense, if you think about you be understanding market structure, think about um, training wheels. Think about, uh, cause I'm not teaching you to be dependent on indicators, but think about training wheels. Think about the little bubble thing, the little round thing that you put on yourself, the little floaties when you get into the swimming pool. Think about those things. Because as we understand market structure, we're learning, how, we're learning the candles. As you can see, that's one of our lessons. So as we understand those things and as we navigate through those, what the cash out strategy does is it allows you to see the market with a little bit more clarity because it takes out the guesswork. And so it's giving you those bumper boards when you go bowling, the training wheels when you're learning how to ride a bike, right? It's giving you those things to give you that extra oomph of confidence as you begin to take your trades. And that's it. It does not deviate and it is not a scalping thing. It's not that. It helps you see the market with a little bit more clarity to bring you that extra confidence as you are building and learning your skill set and learning how to trade. That's what it is. Any questions, comments, or testimony so far, drop it in the chat, please, and we'll keep going. Okay. So now this is trading view. Okay. Now I want to be very, very clear because, uh oh, what I do? Okay. I want to be very clear. Because what I'm going to do, like I can draw on this, I can mark up on here. This was, is already set with this parameters. But if you notice down here, it says GBP, it's a chart by trading view and it's, it'll open up and we can go ahead and we can get on trading view. If you notice that I'm already logged in. So this is where our chart trading is going to begin this evening. All right. This is where it's going to start from right now. So you notice that what it did is it brought me to trading view. Now, I highly recommend if you haven't learned how to navigate through TradingView, stay on the website. But what you notice you see us teaching on is actually on TradingView on the um on the calls. And so this is what TradingView is. Now, I have a paid account, so some of my features are going to be a little bit greater, but I'm not telling you to get a paid account. I'm not sharing with you to get a paid account. I just want to be very clear on that. All right? Um, but at the same time, I do want to give you resources and understanding that, you know, some of my features might look a little bit different than yours and that or I might be able to do a little bit more. And that's why, but they do have a free account that you can utilize and be successful with. So I'm not advocating for you to spend any more money, um, but it's a tool that will bring you some value. Now, so right here, what I'm gonna do is these three little toggle bars, what they are, I'm gonna come click that, I'm gonna click products. When I click products, I see my charts, okay? And I like how they say often imitated, never duplicated. And that's because they have other resources out there, but TradingView is like set, their, set the standard in the marketplace when it comes to trading charts. So there are other things out there, but they've kind of set the standard and they just updated that. So I thought that was kind of funny. I saw that earlier today. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and open the charts. And so this is trading view. And for many of you all first time on here, right? If this is your first time with us, your first time looking at a chart or first time actually paying attention to a chart, it might look like an EKG. I know, I know, I know, but we're gonna walk you through that. So now I'm gonna, I want a clean chart. So I'm not going to take away from anything that we've been utilizing. Um, but so I'm going to clean this chart off. This GBP. I will, actually, I do want a USD. Let's see. We haven't been doing this one. I don't want to do that one either. I can mark it up again. So I'm going to just clear this off. All right. So this is what a chart will look like when you first look at it. Okay. This, this is actually what a chart will look like when you first look at it. And what I want to do is familiarize you with trading view a little bit, okay? And, you know, I just kind of want to give you a little bit of familiarization. So, like, for example, and I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump to this one. I'm not going to unmark this one, but I want you to pay attention up here. Don't look at this. I want to pay attention here. All right. And I'm going to do that because we're very familiar with GBP and USD. It's one of the most common currency pairs that's traded. 
uh, is it has a lot of liquidity in it. And, you know, a lot of people default to that. So I want to use that one. And then we'll go back to the other one when we start looking at other things. Now, why am I doing that? So you notice across the top, what I have is a currency pair. And then I also have my time. Okay. I have my, my chart, like the one minute, five minute, 15. Then of course we have the candle types. We have indicators, you know, the templates. And then of course we have an alert. We got a bar replay. So there are different undo. There are different things that are here. So over to my right, on the right-hand side, I see different currencies, my watch, which is a watch list that's here. And then I also, there's some market news and different things that the technicals that are down here, but also you have your live price that's happening right here. Now on the left side, we have different tools and we'll kind of click on a few of those, but I want to start here. So GBP USD, why did I want to start here? What we know is that we have two currencies. One is being bought, one is being sold. Now, you are not doing the buying and selling. You are analyzing the market and watching live data, okay? I wanna be very clear. So we are, if you think about the brokers, the market movers, the banks, the financial institutions, all of those individuals, okay? All of them, what they have, are they're moving the market. We're not the market movers. We are what you call retail traders. Now, they trade the market, you trade with your broker. They trade the market, you trade with your broker. So it's very important as you set up demo accounts or you said determine who you, you want to set up an account with who you're going to trade with. So you want to always utilize an account with who you want to trade with, okay? So now GBP USD, you British pound has a strength and a price attached to it, and so does the US dollar. But what this says is I have a base currency and I have what's called a counter currency. My base currency is my British pound. My counter currency is my USD. My base currency and my USD. So what does that mean? That means that USD is going to buy British pound. So that means, and that's why I wanted to use this one. Right now, your price runs along the side. So if you were going to go to Yahoo Finance or you were to go somewhere, these numbers should match. And what it's saying is it's going to take, if I was traveling internationally right now, if I was going overseas, I'm, I'm on my way to London, okay? That means that it's going to take $1.24, $1.24, $1.24, one US dollar and 24 US cents in order for me to get a British pound. So when you travel, you notice that the currency rate changes. That's what these numbers are. So as the dollar strengthens and weakens against the British pound, you know, does it take more British pound? Does it take, I mean, more US dollar or less US dollar? That's what these numbers represent, okay? That's what these numbers represent. Now, here, the numbers, what we call pips and a pipette, the numbers, not this one, not the pipette, that's the broker spread, but these two numbers, right? These numbers, these numbers, these numbers, okay? Now, I want you to think about it. It is $6.6 .6 trillion a day moving through the market, all right? If I was to take one cent and break that down, Imagine how much money it would take for us to be able to participate in the market. I'm not going to do that math for you. But at 6.6 .6 trillion, understand it's a lot. And we would not have the availability financially to participate in the market. So what has transpired to make it, you know, make sense is they broke that cent down to smaller fractions in order for us to be able to participate. And that's what the pips are. You're gonna get a wonderful class on pips. I just translated it. So you got your King James version, that's the message version, right? So all I did is just translate it for you to understand that they just broke it down for you, 
right? All they did is break it down so we could participate. And that's why we have pips because they had to break that to penny down into smaller fractions because 6.6 .6 trillion is a lot of money. That's a lot of currency flowing in the market. And we would not be able to participate if it stayed at the 124. So it broke down to where now we have the leverage and the financial ability to participate in the market because banks can't trade at 10 cent lots and things like that. They trade at million dollar lots and, and things like that. So they're trading with millions of dollars. They're trading with hundreds and thousands and the average person does not have the financial leverage to be able to do so. And so that's really what this is. And that's what that price is. Questions, comments, testimonies. I'm gonna keep going. All right. So now when we look at our price, okay. So now I'm gonna switch back. So that that's our price. So now when we're over here and we're looking at a currency, what we have is a one minute, a five minute, a 15 minute, a 30 minute. One hour. We have, if I click down here, you see we have many, many different intervals and many different, and it can even go down. I've, I've seen, you can add time frames on here. Now I'm not doing all of that. You can do seconds. I don't need sec a second chart. It's not that serious for me. But the point is, is that every candle is going to represent, right? Every single can like it's gonna take me 30 minutes to get my next candle. If you notice on my 30 minute chart, that I have three minutes and 37 seconds before I get a new candle. So I get a candle every 30 minutes. If I jump to my four hour, we just got a new candle at nine o'clock. So at nine o'clock, I got a new candle, but then that means that I have another three hours and 30 minutes before I get another candle. So the higher the time frame is, then what that ultimately means is that that's, you know, it's gonna take a lot more impact and a lot more things happening in the market in order for that one to move. So what we do when we're analyzing the charts is we trade from what we call a top-down analysis approach. You will never see how the market moves on a lower time frame. On a lower time frame, you see all the activity. On a higher time frame, you see all the movement. Lower time frame activity, higher time frame direction. Lower time frame is the children. Think about it. Children in your household, they don't control a thing, but they always have the most to say and they are the loudest. So if I'm on my lower time frame, like my granddaughter, she talks all the time. I love her dearly, but she never stops talking. And matter of fact, I don't even pick her up first because I know she's going to talk the entire car ride when I have to pick them both up. And I say that with love. But the reality is, is that when I'm on my hour time frame, when I look at this one, I get a candle once an hour, right? You know, I get one candle an hour. And so that doesn't look like a lot of movement. So kind of think about like, if you think about the, the head of the household, the parents, the, pe the people that are a little bit more wiser, a little bit more mature, or should be wiser, a little bit more mature, then what happens is they don't, you get that one candle that's going to give the direction. They don't need to be loud. You're not getting a lot of movement. You're going to get what you get. And that's determining the direction that we're headed in. And when I get to my lower time frame, look at all of these candles that's happening in there and all of the movement. And I'm saying that with love because the reality is, is the lower time frame where you will see market structure, you will see patterns, you will see those things. But the reality is, it's my higher time frames that give me the direction, that give me my market bias that tells me ultimately the direction I'm going, but it's my lower time frames where we start analyzing for entry because that's gonna help us target that proper entry once we understand the direction we're going. Questions, comments, testimonies, anyone? Questions, are we clear? 555 in the chat if you are with me. Five, five, five in the chat, awesome. Awesome, awesome. So now, when I move over, we have different types of candles, okay? And this is ultimately what you're going to see here. We have different types of candles. Now, we tend to focus on our traditional Japanese candles. We focus on our line chart. And the line chart, so you saw, like you notice these are the, I have three highlighted here for myself. You notice that you have what's called favorites. So you can come in and you can star what you want to be in the favorites bar. Even when I come back to my time, okay, you want to favorite what you're looking for. So you notice that 
my one minute, the five, 15, my 30, my hour and my four hour, it, my daily, weekly and monthly, those are the ones that I have favorite because we frequent those a lot. So that way I'm not always having to utilize my drop down. Same thing here. When I look at, we have different types of candles. I don't use all of these, okay? I don't use all of these different types of candles. What I do use though, are my traditional Japanese candles. We use our lion candle and I use my Hikanashi candle. And so because of those three, now you notice that if it says nothing, if it says nothing, if it says nothing, then I'm using traditional Japanese candles or obviously my line chart because my line chart, I can obviously look at this and see that it's a line. When I use my Hikanashi candles, it now says Hikanashi. All right. So, you, I, and I'm saying that because, you know, we're not using something that's automatically programmed. You're having to enter this yourself. So having to enter it yourself, you need to notice that it has to say Hikanashi here in order for you to ensure that you are using Hikanashi candles because we do use those um, when we're trading. And on this platform are some of us use them. Some people like naked charts and that's fine. So notice that here we are, all right? Notice that, you know, I'm, I'm looking and we have these, okay? So what we've gone over so far is our currency. We've looked at our time and we've also looked at our type of candles. Now we have different indicators that we can, uh, wrong one. We have different indicators that we can add, okay? So you have some that might be favorite, and then of course you can come in and add indicators. And if I click it, now that was the favorites, like the same little favorite bar. I click it, I can come in. For example, I'm just gonna write my stochastic. I'm gonna just drop my stochastic on there. And you notice that my stochastic is now here at the bottom, okay? So it's now there. And so you can come in and you can add the indicators that you would like to utilize and they're, they're there, okay? Now, Another thing that we want to also get familiar with is our alerts. So here's our alerts. Now, our alerts, they allow you, now I'm not going to go that in depth right now, but these alerts allow you, so you're not sitting at the chart all day, ding, ding, you do not have to sit at the chart all day. If you want the alert, you set the alert to the price, the currency, the price that you want to be notified. When the price reaches that, then guess what? you get an alert and you then you come back to the charts. So you don't have to sit there and wait or come back and say, oh man, I missed it. No, you didn't. You said an alert, okay? I want to change my currency pair. So what you do is if you just, you want to type something in, you just come here, GBP, whatever you want to type in, you type it in, whatever currency you want to look at. Now, also, I want you to understand that you see men, I typed in GBP USD. Look how many different GBP USDs that are there. Now, we want to also get familiar. We typically default to the first one. Now, different brokers feed the currencies, okay? This is the most common one that we utilize. We typically default to the first one. Um, Oanda, you notice that. I mean, you see that they're different. Not one is right or wrong. But what you're typically going to see is by default, we're going to just select the first one. And the entire time that I've been trading, that's the one I've been using. So, um, but I'm saying that because there are different, I mean, if depending on what you're trading, how you're trading, remember this platform is used for traders all around the world. So they're going to be fed. This platform is going to be fed by many different brokers. And so we're not advocating a broker, but look, so if you're using swaps, I'm not getting into all of that. We're going to stick with the first one, okay? Um, typically, that's that's what we go with. You type it in. Typically, you're just typing in GBP, USD, and you just click enter, and it's going to default to that first one. And that's typically where we are. Questions, comments, testimony so far? Questions, comments, testimonies, none. Great. Love this class. Love this crowd. So um, that's really what that is. And so that's kind of like where we default to. And I did. I lost my indicators. I am going to go back and I'm going to add those indicators. And what we're going to do is talk about the BYOB cash out strategy. And then we will look at the broker. Okay. But before I go any further, Oh, one more thing for familiarization. Need this, gotta have this. 
So across the bottom, we talked about across the top. We, and I want to I want to talk about your watch list before I move on. And I want to talk about across the bottom. OK, and then, of course, you have tools. So you have tools that you will need your trend line, how you make support and resistance lines. OK, those things are there. The little boxes that you see us mark up. So what you have to do, your path, right? Different things that are in here. You'll see me click these 100 times all the time. So, and I think you guys saw me because they had added emojis. I don't need emojis on my chart, but I guess it'd be fun and teaching sometimes. But, you, you know, my most recent ones that I use are here and that'll default based on you as a trader. But these are those little icons and little things to help you mark up the charts to make yours look like a coloring book like mine. So these are all of those things that we get familiar with um, that really help us. The ruler, helping us count pips, you know, helping us, you know, count. But there are many tools. And as you advance in your skill set in trading, then the FIB channel, you know, the FIB rechacement, the fan, different things like the head and show, like so many different things in here. But just getting started from a basics perspective, you want to focus on this trend line and you also want that horizontal line because those are the two that you will use the most, okay? Those are the two that you will use the most. And then you'll see the box, the little um, rectangle box that we use quite often. So those are those things that you will use the most getting started, okay? Now, across the bottom, across the bottom is your date and time. I mean, this is very simple. You have your price, you have your, your, your price, and then you have when it happened. So you notice that mine is defaulted. You can change that back to your UTC time, which is that international time. Now understand that's important because we trade international. This is a global market. And typically mine is normally set to UTC. But right now I was doing something, I think the other day, and I changed it to uh, the, the actual time. And that's a good thing. When I'm teaching, I like to be on UTC because I'm talking to people in different areas around the world. But when I'm um, by myself, I like it to be on the time that I'm looking at because I can look at that right now. And that's showing me that it's Tuesday, 11 April at 9.35, which is my current time, right? So that's the UTC minus four, which is my current time. We better not be missing a trade, right? So questions, comments, testimonies. Questions, comments, testimonies. Questions, comments. None? Okay. So... What I want to talk to you about, I'm like, do we have a trade? Do we have a trade? Um, I see it moving, but we haven't analyzed it. So we don't take trades that we don't analyze. So I'm going to add my PSR so we can talk about, uh, which is your parabolic stop and reversal. So we can talk about the BYOB cash out strategy and talk about why the accuracy and what, what it does. Okay. So what are we typically looking for? So I'm actually going to get on this 15-minute chart, and I am going to look at a historical trade. Obviously, not on this one. So let me find one. I'm going to look at a historical trade. I want one that's going to be very clear because I don't, and I don't want to have to go back too far to grab it because we'll be navigating the charts and pushing it just a little bit. And I don't want, let's just start here, all right? So when we're looking at the strategy, be well, be cash out, a lot of times you'll see us starting from our lower time frame. okay? You'll see us starting from, eh, I don't want to do that one. Let's do this one. So a lot of times you'll see us starting where we're starting from our lower time frames. okay? Now, what I want you all to get familiar with is I'm going to put a box around here and I'm doing this for visual purposes, okay? I'm doing this for the sake of visuals. You're not boxing anything when you're trading, okay? You're, you're not boxing anything when you're actually taking a trade. This is for your visual as I switch back and forth and I'll do a side-by-side -side to show you what it should look like, but I wanna do a visual right now. So you notice that there are three indicators that we use when we talk about be well, be cash out strategy, okay? Three indicators. Now, if what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide my PSR, look at my stochastic, and matter of fact, I'm gonna do it this way. So I'm gonna unhide it. I'm gonna do a side by side because I want you guys to see the difference. This is USDJPY. So let me 
USDJPY. I want you all to see the difference. All right. So I want you to see the difference of a naked chart and one utilizing the BYB cash out strategy and why it is what I mentioned before as far as market structure with the twist, okay? I wanna show you, and what is this one? <laughs> now, sometimes what we have found is you guys have seen that sometimes, hold on. Now you notice that's funny, huh? Cause look, it does that. And we find that out. So you notice here we are. Let me make sure. That's the one, the FXCM. And I come over here. It should be the same one. But this one is marked up and that one is not. And we have found that to be the case sometimes. And that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it. And we're going to try this one more time. And guess what? We're going to, you notice how we erased everything? And it wasn't there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop back down. I'm going to delete the box and draw it back. And that's going to put it on there. So then you guys can see it. Now, so have you guys experienced that? because it does that sometimes and that's okay. So I'm gonna delete the box and then it should put my box on there. We'll put the box back on there. And now you see how it's drawing it on the other side with me. So if yours does that, just do what I just did. And because sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, I can't control trading view, can't do it, don't wanna do it. But um, yeah, everything that we deleted, it did that so sometimes you just have to play with it now this is what i'm trying to show you all right this is the whole purpose i have two side by side screens and i'm looking at the exact same thing okay so i have two side by side screens and i'm looking at the exact same thing and so in looking at the exact same thing what you're seeing over here is the byb cash out strategy and over here you're looking at a naked chart Okay, now we're going to do our time frame confluence. We're going to do we're going to do all of that. But the reality is is what you're seeing is you're seeing nice and smooth. And now look at us in that exact same area looking at the exact same thing and you see that it looks a little different. And so you know, so here you're looking at when do I enter a trade? How do I enter the trade? What am I looking for? Even if I look at my higher time frame, okay? If I look at my higher time frame and I look at where that box is, you see that that was one long candle and you might have missed that opportunity. So, and I say that because you're looking at it with a naked eye. And with a naked eye, we all see things just a little bit differently, okay? And now when I'm looking over here on my higher time frame, what you're seeing is you, you notice how here I have one long green candle and one small red candle, but over here I have, you can see the two green candles to where it got you up to that same point, but it gave you that extra level of confidence and, and assurance when you would be looking at that trade. And that's ultimately what, we're, what, I'm, what I was referring to. So if I drop back down to my 15 minute chart, well, we actually would take a trade as far as analyzing for entry, then of course, now look at the difference that you see. And so I do use naked charts. And when I'm marking up, you see me do it in the mornings. I use naked charts when I'm marking um, line chart, the line candles when, when I'm doing support and resistance lines. All of those things are what's taking place. But at the same time, what you're seeing is you're seeing BYB cash out. So let's talk about BYB cash out strategy for just a moment. So what is it? Now, your stochastic, right? Questions, comments, testimonies before I move. Questions, comments, testimonies. All right. So your stochastic, okay? 
your stochastic, your stochastic, your stochastic. So your stochastic is going to fluctuate, right? That's going to move from your 20 to your 80. All right, that's going to fluctuate. This is what we call a momentum indicator. And so the market gets overbought, the market gets oversold. Overbought is up here at the top. And just think about you bouncing a ball or whatever. If the ball is all the way at the top, it has to come back down. If it's at the bottom, if you bounce it off the floor, it's going to go back up and hit the ceiling. So imagine a ball just bouncing up and down and up and down. I know if it hits the ceiling, it has to come to the floor. If it hits the floor, it has to go to the ceiling. So that's a momentum indicator. And so this is based off of things that have happened that gave it indication. It is a leading indicator, okay? So it is an indicator and it's a leading indicator because it's taking data from the past in order to quote unquote attempt to predict the future. So it's not standalone. You never want all lagging. You never want all leading indicators. Now, these two are what we call lagging indicators, all right? Those are lagging. And my lagging indicators means that something had to happen already. That means that something had to happen in order to give indication. So and to put it into the natural mind, things we deal with all the time, my iPhone will be a leading indicator. So. For example, if I'm somewhere and I if I'm somewhere or at a certain time, my phone will tell me, hey, you need to leave now in order to get there. And it might be Saturday. But that doesn't mean that because I'm got up at a certain time and I started moving around, my phone is going to make the assumption that it's time for me to go. Or not, let me not say Saturday because it does have the dates, the smart part. It might be a holiday, like Friday, the kids were out of school. So last Friday, there was no school, but my phone still told me, you know what, that would be my stochastic indicator. That is my leading indicator. My phone still told me, hey, you know, leave, leave now to arrive by this time. So it's based on my past historical events that told my phone to tell me to leave so I can get there by a certain time because it knows my routes. It's predicting my movement. That's what your stochastic is. It's a momentum indicator. And so it does the same thing when I get to her school to tell me, hey, you know, you will be at your next destination by X amount of time because I have a typical pattern, a routine that I take every day between 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. I have this pattern and this routine and my phone is always telling me, hey, be time to leave so you can get to your next point. And that's what the stochastic does. But the stochastic does not know that it was a holiday on Friday. So it's never a standalone indicator. You need the lagging indicators, which are these two, which is my Hikanashi candles and my parabolic stop and reversal. I need those lagging indicators in order to tell me that those lagging indicators say, hey, that something transpired, something took place in order for me to make that move, meaning that. I actually started my car, you know, I started my car. And when I start my car, you know, you put your blinker on, you do some, there is some action that took place in order for me to execute. So those work together. So what this is, is what we call trend candles. You notice that there's a lot of noise on this side. There's quite a bit of noise. So you see green, red, green, red, green, red. So you're seeing every buyer, every seller, every buyer, every seller. But when I look at the green candles, what my green candles tell me is when I look at my Hikanashi candles, they're nice, nice, beautiful, nice flowing green candles. They're beautiful, right? They just look so nice and smooth. Well, guess what? That's the bottom line up front. They take out all of your guesswork. They analyze it for you. They, they remove all your questions. They get rid of all of that for you. And so with the getting rid of that for you is letting you know that there are more buyers in the market than there are sellers, that the ultimate movement is going to be a buy. And that's what my Hikanashi candles tell me. They're trend candles. Now, support and resistance is our lifeline, right? Support and resistance is key. And so when I look at these little dots, 
These are what we call parabolic stop and reversals, but they're also what is considered a dynamic support and resistance. So when you study support and resistance, you notice that support and resistance is the ceilings and the floor in the market that I like to refer to them as the stop signs in the market. Because when you look at the market, you look at those areas, you know, you have support and resistance and that kind of gives you your areas and your zones that you want to trade in. And we'll get a little bit deeper into that as we go through other courses and classes, but that's those zone areas that you want to kind of stay in. Well, that, well, this is what we call a dynamic support and resistance. So if I'm taking a buy, I'm looking for my stochastic right? My leading indicator. If this one is doing something else, it's a no-go, right? It's a no-go. If it's doing something else, it's a no-go. So, but it's telling me that blue line cross over the red and an upward momentum. Now, typically we like it around the 20. When you get a little bit more advanced and as you elevate your skill set, you'll see me take trades or analyze them or some of our ed other educators, they'll analyze trades and they won't be at the 20. Well, guess what? That's because they understand what's happening in the market right now. And you have to understand what's happening in the market. So if you're still in that beginning phase, that learning phase, you want that to be around that 20, okay? Now, then also what we're looking for is that green candle with a flat bottom, okay? That green candle with a flat bottom. I just told you guys where to get the arrow from and I click something else. I do it all the time. But at least I told you, so you know I know what I'm talking about. So you get the green candle with a flat bottom and that piece are flipped to the bottom. So you notice that when I looked over here, this candle was actually a little red, right? It was a little red. But here I have a nice flat bottom candle, you know. So this is why when you first enter a trade sometimes, you see what's happening underneath the Higanashi candle right here? This is why sometimes when you enter a trade, you get a little pullback. That's what that five minute is going to be about. And we'll get there in a minute. So that's what we're looking for. So I have my stochastic and an upward momentum. I have blue line cross over the red and upward momentum. I had a green candle with a flat bottom piece on flip to the bottom. Okay, that's that alignment. Now, I want to jump up to my hour. When I jump up to my hour, and I'm going to need to do it on this one as well. When I jump up to my hour... All right, I'm trying to give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison so you can understand. When I jump up to my hour, my hour needs to be in a buy. So you notice that I, I don't need a PSR, I don't need a flat bottom, I don't need those things. But you notice I have that blue line cross over the red. And then you notice that here, right here, I have a green candle, okay? Now this is a Hikanashi candle. I also have a nice, beautiful green candle on this side, okay? My underlying candle. But let's go up higher because my confluence which means alignment, okay? Confluence simply means alignment. It needs to be an alignment. It needs to be an agreement. Like, you know, if my 15 minutes says do something, but my higher time frames, it's not an alignment. My higher time frames, you know, it's saying that I'm doing something else, you know, we don't do it, okay? So when I look at my four hour, I like to look at the higher time frame. You'll notice this on Monday and Tuesday mornings when you come trade with me and analyze with me and set up with me, that I like to always look at where my higher time frames are. What is my higher time frame telling me? Because that's really going to give me that overall bias in the market. Okay, what's really happening? Am I, I don't like to trade against my higher time frame. And so when I look at my higher time frame, you see that it's all in a buy. It's all in a buy. And then when I come over here and I put my traditional candles in a buy, look at that beautiful, beautiful, long, long candle, right? That is engulfing. So you look at what happened. So that was just a correction in the market. And you can see that beautiful, beautiful. And so ultimately, that's the trade. That would have been a trade. And as you learn support and resistance, which will have a support and resistance class as well, as you learn support and resistance, then you know that we would not have taken this trade past here. But what I wanted to do is not to get into all of that. I wanted to familiarize you with the strategy. Now, why is that important? Why is it important to learn strategy? I won't say quote unquote first, but why is it important to learn the strategy and how to analyze for entry? Well, it's all important to learn together, okay? It's all important to learn together. Because what you'll learn on your on the other calls is how to analyze the market. How do I, 
you know, look forward for the future? How do I um, analyze the big picture of the market? And then I have to know how to drill down to actually take a trade. And that's what this call is. You know, this call is showing you how this is how we would have entered. This is how we would have taken a trade. This is how we would have done that. Um, so that's about a 50 pip move. Based on your lot size, that's quite a bit of money. And whether it's a 10 cent pip or one lot, you know, whatever it is, that's quite a bit of money that you could have made just from analyzing that trade. All right. Um, and that's that's really what that does. And then, of course, as I look at it, when you can kind of see where you are in the market, you know, when I start with my higher time frames, okay. So when we're looking at the market from a higher time frame, a top-down analysis approach, we know that this is a major area that we don't want to bypass. Now, once again, I'm not going to teach you that tonight, but I'm trying to make a point is that when we begin our analyzation and when we begin analyzing the market, we understand that this is an area where the market had been pushing up to and that we now have a major area that the market has to attempt to bypass. So as you're looking at that, then I know where my take profit is. I know how far I'm going. I know where I'm not pushing past. But as we begin to drill down, then, you know, like I'll ask you guys on that call, well, hey, did you take a trade? Did you do that? Well, this is how you do that. That's what this is. You know, I have my USDJPY. I know that I wasn't going any further than right here because we marked it up on a higher time frame. But how do I analyze for entry? And it's important to know how I analyze for entry. Now, I do want to drop down to the five minute because I did want to show you um, when we do drop down, I got to pull this one back over. So my five minute is how I actually enter the trade, okay? We already know we analyzed for entry on my 15. We checked our confluence. And I wanna show you the side by side because I want you to see what it would look like traditionally. And then of course, what that would look like, um, how you actually enter the trade. So you notice that when we were on our 15 minute chart, okay, I moved it again, what was me? We noticed that this is where we had our flat bottom candle. We already checked our one hour, our four hour in order to understand where our confluence was. And I showed you where we had that pullback on my lower time frame. But now I dropped down to my five minute and the five minute is how where you pretty much analyze for that entry. Now I want you to look at this five minute. What do you notice? Somebody help me. What do you notice on this five minute chart where I leave, I'm going to lead a crosshair right there. What do you notice on this five minute chart for entry? What do you notice? What does anybody notice? What does somebody, anybody notice? one which one is in a buy which one is i'm not talking about don't look at don't look at that's that's a good observation but do not look at the um at the traditional japanese candle stay over here look over here tell me what you see black candle with pisar we do have a flat candle with pisar go a little bit deeper A little bit deeper. Don't overthink it. It's real. So what are our rules? What are our rules? What's our non-negotiable? What are our rules? What are uh, what? Yes. So what about my stochastic? What's what's going on with my stochastic? What's going on with my stochastic? My stochastic is a non-negotiable. That's a leading indicator. What's going on with my stochastic? Not overbought. Mm -mm. Not over. I'm not concerned about the overbought. I'm not concerned. What about the? 
it's all right below red line so you're telling me and i think i got another blue line pointing down there we go there we go a non-negotiable a non-negotiable is my stochastic so what we noticed previously is that on our 15 minute chart on this side that it was in a cell you also notice that right there on my five minute now remember we're trying to get a tight entry that's why we look at the five minute the five minute is our our point of entry so we noticed that we were on our 15 minute chart the underlying candle was in a cell, but I had a blue, I had a blue line cross over the red and an upward momentum. I had that red candle, I mean a green candle with a flat bottom piece of our flip, right? That's what we had. But you notice that my stochastic is pointed downward over here. No, 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 no. So what that did is when I'm here on my 15 minute chart, okay? When I'm on my 15 minute chart, and that red candle, that five minute candle is in there too. So we notice that the five minute and the 15 minute underlying candle was in a cell. I'm trying to show you just how much the BYB cash out helps you out. If you follow the rules, if you follow the rules. So as you're looking at it, so that red candle, that's right there. And so you would want to enter after that. So notice my stochastic is in a downward momentum, okay? That's a non-negotiable, even when I drop down. So, and that's going to help you with dial that pullback, getting that right entry. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over just a little bit to where it starts pulling up. I jump up to my 15. When I get to my 15, okay? When I get to my 15, now look, I got that's all I am is I waited to the next flat bottom candle. That's what happened. And now look at what happens over here. So my five minute, my stochastic's now in an upward momentum. My 15 minute, my stochastic's in an upward momentum. I still have a flat bottom, green candle, piece so are still flipped to the bottom. I have confluence everywhere. Come back up to my hour. My hour, I have confluence, right? I have it, and then even on my four hour, right? We already know we have confluence on that four hour because that's that same four hour window. So here I have my four hour, right? I got my four hour and now see that nice, beautiful candle right there on my four hour, even on my hour, you notice right there. So now I, you still want to pay attention. So hopefully that helped bring some clarity to where our take profit is. It's not 10 pips in cash out. My take profit is our support and resistance line. So this is where you as a trader have to make a decision. Is that is it worth that trade? Because you would have got in somewhere over here and ta-da, 30 pips, I think is worth it. But you know, also know where to take your profit. Questions, comments, or testimonies. Was this helpful? Questions, comments, or testimonies. Awesome. Very helpful. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And so I want to kind of help you guys see the way forward. This call is going to be shifting to a different night, but it's also going to be a call that's going to be slow paced. It's going to be a call that's going to be broken down because you will have broker training. You will have you will be cash out trade analysis trading with trade view familiarization training. You're going to have training that is, you know, going to assist you with support and resistance lines. That's what this basics is all about. Okay. That's what's going to happen. And it's going to be in two different sessions, kind of give you an understanding of where we are the way forward as we begin to lay out our full call schedule with all of our educators, you know, um, and so we're going to have two different time slots, which those what those time slots are designed to do is they're going to be covering the same information, but we have individuals that participate from overseas, and then we have individuals that participate in the United States. And obviously right now at nine o'clock at night, that means it's what, uh, 
two, one, two, and three o'clock in the morning, depending on where you are. So we want to make sure that we're facilitating all of that. So what I want to make sure is that all of us are definitely paying attention to where we, you know, the, the telegram each and every single day, because if you notice that you'll get an update each and every single week as to what our call schedule is and what's happening as we roll out these changes and roll out these updates and these transitions. Because as you guys know, once again, we're not going to be on Zoom, okay? I wanna be very clear, we're not gonna be on Zoom, but so please pay attention to Telegram as we do that. Then also, I wanna bring you back over here before we close out, because what I wanna make sure you do is you get registered. We've had a very successful week um, so far, and it was only Tuesday. This is a power pack week. Today was a power pack day. You want to make sure that you are registered for our vision week. And what we did is normally when you do attend our events, you do attend our webinars, is that you have to register each week for each webinar. Well, we wanted to make sure there was opportunity for you to continue to bring your plus ones, to continue to bring those individuals that are also here for you like these weekends, right? Um, these evenings. So we had very, very, I mean, great attendance, great turnout. And you want to make sure that you are maximized. You have two more opportunities to take advantage of this, which is Wednesday and Thursday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of the opportunity and what's available for you. Also, you want to download the app. You're going to get notifications to the app as well. If you have not already downloaded the app, make sure you come on your phone to the website. It, I, I, I don't know why anybody would need this one, but if you do need the Play Store, it's right here. And then, of course, for everybody else in the world, there is the Apple. And you want to go get a piece of that and download the app in, in the app in the um, app store. So you definitely want to do that. But you want to make sure that what you do is you want to make sure you get registered for our summits. So we have summits that are taking place. And I'm excited because I mean, we as we got started and we started our pre-enrollment phase. We started with Jacksonville and Cleveland, and now we have Detroit this month as well. So you want to get registered and you want to take advantage. And Jacksonville and Cleveland is this weekend. You want to make sure you're there. And then um, Detroit is the following weekend. Um, so please, 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 not please for me, but please for you, your family, your lifestyle, your legacy. And you guys hear me say this all the time. So it was so refreshing to hear someone else say it today is that you're going to leave a legacy. You are going to leave a legacy. Regardless of how you feel, you're going to leave a legacy. You are going to leave a legacy. But what kind of legacy are you going to leave? You know, you are going, see, we think a legacy is wealth and abundance, and but there is also poverty as well. You are going to leave a legacy. Do you want to be known for less than and lack, or do you want to be known for you leaving opportunity and, and wealth and abundance for your legacy, for your family, for your last name? So what do you want to be known for? And wouldn't it be wonderful to be able to see it being lived out through your family and through your in, in this lifetime? So that's all I have. So hopefully you guys were able to take advantage. You know, we didn't get to the we did not get to um, setting up our broker, but the, once again, these calls will be broken down. They will be broken down for your success, slow pace, assistance, hands-on. You know, we want to make sure that you're navigating and understanding how to do so. And also, we want to make sure that you're taking advantage. So um, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, do not forget tomorrow at 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We do have our basics analysis, our chart analysis, our trade analysis. That is going to be happening at 5.30 a.m. And then on Thursday, we're going to have that intermediate session, which is a chart, chart analysis. And you're going to have that at 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So show up, come ready to trade, take trades, be successful, show up with your laptop. Don't show up in the bed with your bonnets. Show up at the table with your coffee and a laptop, okay? So I'm just being funny, but I love you. And I'm going to call Miss Reed. Do you want to close us out? 
Yes, I'll be delighted to. And again, thank you so much for a wonderful session tonight. Let's pray. Father God, once again, we just thank you for your love and we honor your presence in our midst. Thank you, God, for having your mind full of us. And we thank you so much for all that you have done, that that you're doing this very moment, and all that you're about to do in a future. God, we are thankful, appreciative, and grateful for your anointing upon the lives of Mr. Rogers, our founder, and Ms. Dyer, our co-founder, and each of our educators, God. They're all so dedicated to our futures and to the success of many, many generations to come. So we commit our way to you saying yes to your will, yes to your way, yes to your word. And God, we just want to thank you so much for making us the largest economic empowerment movement known to mankind. We decree and declare that we are two million families mm -hmm. strong and that uh, we, we, we only want dreams that come from you tonight, God. And so keep us in our sleep tonight. We commit our sleep to you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. And thank God. Let us go our way having sweet sleep tonight. And we'll see you tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. God bless. Thank you.